guys, I'm Amanda, the Botanical Brunette, and welcome to my channel. So in my last video, I basically asked you guys, what do you want to see next year for me? I want to kind of replace my plant hauls and do another type of monthly video. This type of video came up the most. So I decided, let me just do one for you guys, because if you guys want to see my favorite plants and my least favorite plants, which will be next video. So I'm going to do this video a little bit differently because when I went to pull the plants from my shelves, I had about 20 plants and at that point I might as well do a plant tour. What I did is I made some guidelines that these plants have to follow and kind of pull from that. So I actually wound up narrowing it down to eight of my favorite plants right now that fall into these categories. I think I might be doing that next time or every time that I do these favorite plant videos because I think that having some kind of guidelines and reason why I'm loving it is probably good and not just because, oh yeah, I like this plant, it's cute. One of the guidelines is it has to have the best growth over the spring and summer. So these are gonna be plants that have grown crazy over the spring and summer, have given me new growth, have grown larger leaves, more fenestrated leaves. That is one stipulation. Another one would be new and obsessed. So these are gonna be plants that I have gotten recently in the last six months that I am absolutely just still obsessed with. Like I am just staring at these plants all the time. Another one is plants that have overcome any issues. So plants that I may have rehabbed, plants that I thought were goners and just came back all of a sudden. These are going to be plants that have just overcome a lot, even pests. And another one is plants that are catching my eye again. There are times where I am just like, whatever about that plant. And then all of a sudden I just, oh, hi, like, how are you? Like all of a sudden I just love that plant again. So this is going to be another stipulation for that is a plant that I was just kind of like whatever about. And I'm just like all of a sudden just hard eyes for. Let's get started. Let me show you all of these plants. I'm gonna go into a little bit of care, a little bit of like, you know, how I ramble with my plants. So let's get started. Also really quick, I wanted to say that these are not in any particular order, not like the first plant or the last plant I show you is the best or the worst. They're just kind of picked at random, like I always do. The first plant that I wanna show you that I am absolutely loving right now is this rapid Bora decursiva. Look at this beautiful plant. Look how big it has gotten. It is wild, guys. Like, it is crazy. Like, I can't believe this plant, how much it's grown over the last few months. So I actually had this plant in water for the longest time because it wound up rotting. I don't know where I learned it, but I learned from somewhere that these were crawling plants, which they're not, they're climbing plants. They do like to have some kind of like support to climb on. Um, I probably should put it on a moss pole. It's usually the best option, but I don't like the way they look. So I just kind of stake them up. Um, I do have these acrylic rods that I use. They're kind of you know, they're clear, so they kind of blend in with everything, but they're not gonna have, the aerial roots are obviously not gonna attach to them. So, you know, it's just kind of basically kind of propping it up, essentially, kind of just putting a bandaid on it. <laughs> but this plant, ever since I did that, has been giving me more and more fenestrations. It is, uh, it's so pretty. I catch myself staring at this plant literally all the time all the time. This plant lives in my southeast window, which most of my plants actually do, but this lives in my southeast window and it is just thriving, like thriving so much. I don't know why I have an issue with Rapidophoras. I always root rot them. My uh, Rapidophora tetrasperma, I actually kind of rotted a little, but I saved it. I was able to kind of reroot it quickly before it died. Um, but I had to like chop it back really a lot and it was just, you know, not, not the best. It's just gorgeous. Like the glossy leaves. 
So this plant is gonna fall into a plant that has overcome issues and also a plant that has grown the best for me because this has just gone wild, crazy. And I also am starting to see some soil all over me. I'm also starting to see some roots kind of popping through. So eventually I might need to repot this, but for now it is so cute in this little diamond planter. Because I root rot it, uh, I do make sure that I am careful with watering. So I actually probably don't water it as much. Um, this plant will actually show you like pretty easily if it needs water, it will start to curl up. So that's a great indication because you know me, I love a plant that lets me know when it, what it needs. So the next plant, I'm gonna need your guys' opinion about what I should do with it. But it's one of my favorite plants right now and that is this Monstera Stanleyana elbow. So we have started to get some good variegation. My camera wants to focus. So this leaf just unfurled. And this leaf has unfurled recently and it's starting to just get so full and pretty. Like I just absolutely love this plant. Even the like lightly splashed leaves are so pretty. So what I wanted to ask you guys and please comment below is should I have this climb or trail? Now I know, these plants are kind of meant to climb, but I saw on, I think it was a girl on Instagram, her name is Mariah Grows, and she trails hers and it's so pretty. She basically trails it down where she wraps the plant around like her plant shelf, which this actually lives on my plant shelf. I did let it trail the first time. I actually had to completely re, <laughs> redo this whole plant uh the beginning of the year i basically chopped it up and propagated it again kind of like i did with my raffinophora and it is just bounced back so well like ugh, so pretty i don't love climbing plants i am more of a trailing plant fan but i do realize that the plant will get bigger and better leaves if it if it climbs but the way she does it is she has it like kind of attached down, like down her plant shelf, um, like on the poles, she kind of wraps it around. So it kind of does the same thing, but only downward, um, which I honestly, I don't know why I would like that more than <laughs> trailing up, but I just don't love the look of like tall moss poles or planks. I just, I, I don't know. I just don't love that look. I like more of like a curtain of plants kind of coming down. So this plant, again, overcome some problems and has given me the most growth, it's starting to give me good variegation, which is a bonus with this plant. And it's just so pretty. Like it's just so cute and pretty. It's also a plant that will let me know if it needs watering. They'll curl up really tight, almost like a Scandapsis. It will just completely curl all the way up. So, but yeah. All right guys, so get ready for this because I'm pretty sure the last time you guys saw this plant on this channel, I've showed it off on my Instagram here and there, but I think the last time you guys saw this plant, it was a two leaf cutting. Here it is now. This is my Hoya Polynura. Look how pretty that is. And how long it's gotten. Like, I only had these two little leaves and now I have so much. And of course, I love it because it's trailing. It's one of my favorite things, but it's starting to get like pretty splashy, which they do, you know, here and there. I actually thought that was pests, but I thoroughly checked it and there's no pests, but it does get kind of like spotty. Some of the leaves like kind of get a little splashy here and there, but like this Polynera is so Oh my gosh. I'm trying everything I can not to cut it and propagate it so I can get like a fuller Hoya, but um, right now I'm loving the two like leaves. I never thought I actually would have this plant in my collection. 
So this is definitely a plant that I will have for a very long time. I don't see any roots coming through, so it doesn't need to be repotted anytime soon, despite the crazy amount of growth. Hoyas typically, at least I have found, don't have a huge root system. So, you know, maybe that's just my Hoyas, but <laughs> I haven't noticed like a crazy amount of roots or that they need to be repotted as often. So, but this plant is just gorgeous. This plant is probably under the new and obsessed. I don't know if I got this less than six months ago, but um, definitely new and obsessed and also the most growth over the spring and summer. It has just blasted off and I'm sure it's gonna grow even more because despite the fact that we're getting into fall, it sits on my plant shelf so it doesn't get, I don't really think it realizes that it's winter time because I still like, you know, it's still getting the same amount of sun and everything versus the plants that kind of sit on the window. They actually almost get more sun in the fall and in the fall and winter. So we'll see how they do. But yeah, this plant probably won't change much growth wise. It still is bursting with growth. You can see that little, little guy that's coming out, but it's constantly giving me growth and I can't wait until it flowers because that's going to be a dream. So this next plant that's my favorite overcame so many issues. I think I've even mentioned them here and there, but this plant was one of those plants that I loved. I've had it for a long time in my collection and it just, last year, it just completely just went off the rails and it just started to decline really bad. So I'm talking about my Alocasia Michaelitziana. Look how big it is. I am in love. So I thought that this plant was a goner. I thought it was, I thought it was done. I thought it was absolutely done. It sat next to my, <laughs> it sat next to my grow lights which didn't, they didn't get enough sun. Honestly, it was my bad, it didn't get enough sun. But I did notice that it started to flower, which I'm like, that's a great sign. I know that you should cut them off to preserve energy, but that's usually an indication that your plant is happy where it is. And, but the leaves were telling me a different story. It was just like yellowing and just not happy. So I was like, you know what, I chopped it basically to one leaf. I don't even think that leaf is still on here. It might be that leaf, because that is the oldest leaf. Um, but I started getting huge leaves. This is the size of my head. Like, ha like this alocasia is gone crazy and I am here for it. I am so excited. <laughs> So I do need to get a bigger pot for it because what I want to do is I want to make sure that this whole stem is in the soil. This actually will all produce either corms or it will produce roots. So I definitely want to get that down into a deeper pot. This pot's not super deep, but eventually I'm going to repot it and it is starting to show some roots through there. So I might be doing a repot with me with this pretty soon. But as I was grabbing these plants, I was like, you know, looking around and stuff like that. And I noticed something on this new leaf right here. Are you ready for this? Look at that. We have a little variegation spot. So this alocasia, starting it over completely has given me like spotty variegation here and there. Now that is the only leaf that I have on here currently that has any kind of variegation, but the corms that came from this plant have some variegation, like little spots here and there on each leaf. So hopefully that keeps up because I would absolutely love it. I mean, I just love the little speck <laughs> that like little tiny little speck of variegation. It just, I was like, no freaking way. Like I am absolutely blown away. So the next plant that I am loving right now is this 
Philodendron White Knight. You guys just saw this plant and my plant haul. I am in awe of this plant. Now, you may notice that it looks a little different. When I showed you this plant in my plant haul, it had that big pink leaf that I didn't love. So I actually did wind up cutting it and I put it, it's still propagating right now in a propagation jar. I'm actually going to combine it with my pink princess because my pink princess has reverted um, and it's giving me those like dark, like cherry, dark cherry like leaves, which are pretty, but they're not like pink. You know, they're not like pink pretty like that anymore. I learned my lesson with those variegation plants. So I made sure that I cut down to where the last variegated leaf was to promote more variegation. And we have a little tiny little knob right there that's coming in. So we already have growth on this plant. That's so exciting. This leaf fully came out. So gorgeous, almost a half moon, almost. This plant has gorgeous variegation. I just love this plant so much. It is just so pretty. I kept, like the, again, one of, this, one of the plants that I catch myself staring at all the time. I wanna photograph it all the time. I love this plant. I have been wanting this plant for so long and I'm so happy that I finally got one. It's just oh, such a dream, it's so pretty. So this plant is going to be a new, new and obsessed, definitely. Um, it hasn't given me a ton of growth, hasn't given me, hasn't been overcome any issues or anything like that. It sits in my southeast window, like all, most of my plants. And, you know, I make sure that it gets a good amount of sun, but not like super, super bright. Because if you have a plant in a super bright area that is variegated, it can cause the plant to brown, like the variegation can start to brown if it's in too much light. So just be careful with that if you have a variegated plant. But I'm just, uh, I'm loving this right now. Like, uh, it's so pretty. So the next plant that I am loving right now is this Anthurium radicanes luxuriance. She's so cute. She's so small. So I showed this off. This is probably one of my newer plants. I don't know if I got it within six months, but I'm gonna put it under the new and obsessed because of this leaf. I had this plant for a long time, a um, couple months, and it did nothing, absolutely nothing. I repotted it twice because I'm like, is it root rotted, like what is going on with it? The roots looked fine. They were just underdeveloped. I actually wound up getting this plant and it did have a leaf that had been cut. So I thought maybe that was the, the newest leaf that had been cut and it just, sometimes anthuriums don't grow super fast. So I was like, maybe that's the reason for it to not grow like super, super, you know, quickly or that's why I haven't had a leaf in a long time, but I now have a new leaf and it is growing bigger by the day. Like it is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is just such a good plant. I want to add it to the growth for the spring and summer, but I'm not going to add it to that just because it really hasn't given me a ton of growth, but it has given me this big leaf. So we'll give it half a point for that. But for mostly it's just going to be my new and obsessed. I am just loving it and I cannot wait until it gets those big lush leaves. Eventually I'll get to that point. Right now this is on my plant shelf so it gets the grow lights and it gets a ton of humidity. It sits right in front of the humidifier. So that is like perfect environment for an anthurium. They like kind of like medium light and a ton of humidity. This leaf is just, it came out like so glossy and so pretty like, ugh. I'm just absolutely in love with this plant. I cannot wait for like more leaves to grow. I did get this one too, this little leaf kind of coming out. This is actually growing. You guys can see it's growing from a separate plant. So I have two in here that have kind of sprouted. So 
I'm just, it's just super cute and I'm loving it. And since we're talking about anthuriums, I want to talk about my anthurium vitatari folium. Look at these leaves. So long. Guys, like, she's strappy. Oh, it's so pretty. And we also have another flower which i'm not gonna know what to do with so if you guys have had an anthurium flower uh, my last video i definitely got schooled on what to do with it and i completely forgot so let me know in the comments if you had an anthurium flower what do i do with this what do i i don't know how to grow a new one i don't even know if i even want to to be honest i don't know if i want to like try to pollinate it it kind of weirds me out <laughs> i don't know why but it kind of weirds me out so i know that's how also how you can get like new variations or species but i don't uh, i don't know but we have this new leaf that kind of is starting to grow i actually had to move this from my southeast window to my plant shelf because it was growing too much like it was growing so much these leaves are so so long oh my gosh they're so beautiful though um they're just so fake and strappy i just i love them they're so pretty yeah i mean this plant is constantly growing for me like it's constantly giving out growth it's i think it's also loving the plant shelf it's able to kind of stretch out and not have like bent leaves on my floor but i am just absolutely loving this anthurium don't listen there are some articles out there that are like you need to water your anthuriums every day don't do that don't water your anthuriums every day like that is scary i water this every week like once a week i don't go crazy with watering with this plant the leaves on this are so beautiful. It does kind of live near my humidifier. It lives on the shelf that my humidifier is on, kind of right next to the other anthurium, but it's on the side, so it doesn't get blasted with humidity all the time. My hygrometer basically reads 50 to 60% humidity, which is sort of room humidity from my house. I do wind up teetering like 40 to 50%. So 60 is a little high, but like, 50% humidity is usually like kind of house temp or house humidity. So it's kind of adapted to that. And I kind of am happy about that because I know that some people with their anthuriums, they're trying to like acclimate them to their house and it's been kind of crazy. So, but I've never had an issue with this plant ever. Definitely going to be on the list for growth because these leaves are, crazy i mean if i could give you a measurement i think that they're about three feet like they're really long maybe two feet i'm terrible with measurement we'll measure them we'll measure it <laughs> but like it's just so big and strappy i'm just so in love with this plant so this plant is going to fall in three categories this is my begonia maculata so this begonia is going to fall in the most growth, the plant that has overcome something, and also a plant that is starting to catch my eye. This begonia was a mess, a mess. When I first got it a year ago, it was like three big leaves and it was kind of a Home Depot rehab. I you know, rehabbed it. And it was actually the first time I ever found that like mesh that is on like the roots. <sighs> I've had ups and downs with this begonia. Um, I actually wound up, I don't, I wound up root rotting the whole plant. I had it in a spot, it was happy. And like a dum-dum, I just moved it. I was like, well, I think it would be better on top of my sh plant shelf, which got almost no light. And it started to, I would water it the same. It was root rotting. Begonias are tricky because they do like water, but like obviously 
they're prone to rotting. So you gotta be careful with watering with this. I water this about once every seven to 10 days. Um, but I always make sure I check it with a moisture meter. Any of the like water loving plants, like my anthuriums and my alocasias, I make sure that I check with a moisture meter because you never know. You never know what's going on deep down. But this begonia has overcome so much. It overcome root rot, it overcome thrips last year. It was just a mess, a full on mess. Even the beginning of this year, I don't know what happened, but the leaves were just falling off of it. It wasn't rotted, but it just like, it was drying out really fast. I was just, I probably have repotted this plant three times this year, just because it's come through a lot, but it's starting to pop new growth. It's starting to trail a little bit. So it's starting to catch my eye. And like, I don't know, the other day I looked over at my plant shelf and I just like caught myself staring at this plant. I'm like, how cute are you? And it kind of like solidified why I actually bought this plant. Because there are some plants in my collection that I'm like, why did I buy you? Why are you here? This plant is just, it's overcome so much. And it's just so pretty. Like the polka dotted leaves on this begonia are so pretty. Like I just love it. And the color, it's so colorful. And even like the back of the leaves are like a red color. Like super pretty. So this plant has overcome a lot and it's also been a plant that has caught my eye and it's grown so much. It's filled out. I had like only maybe a couple cuttings in here and it has just blossomed over the last few months. It's just been growing so well. So I'm just super happy about that. So those are my eight plants that I'm loving right now. Again, with those four stipulations and basically kind of not plants that I'm just pulling willy-nilly. Now my Gloriosum was an honorable mention. Uh, my Philodendron Gloriosum is a beast now, again. Um, I have been doing videos here and there um, about my Gloriosum, basically like experiments and like trials. I wound up root rotting a Gloriosum, but you can watch all those videos. I'll link them up here and link them in the description so you can watch all those. But the reason why I didn't is because I want to do a full video on that. So you guys will get an update of my Gloriosum in the next few weeks. So keep an eye on that. But that's basically it. I want to know in the comments, what is your favorite plant right now? What is your number one favorite plant? Comment below and let me know. I know sometimes it's hard to pick one, but you gotta pick one, one plant in the comment, let me know. But that's it for today. I'm gonna kinda end it short. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.